Welcome to another episode of the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. And today we're talking to Ian McSweeney, who is a 47 year old chartered accountant and finance director of a hotel management company in Dublin, Ireland. He's married with two kids, age five and six. And incredibly, he lost 28 pounds in just 90 days of being alcohol free. If you're listening in the UK, that's two stone. If you're in Australia or elsewhere that uses kilograms, it's about 15 kilograms. That is a huge amount of weight. And he wasn't really, I mean, he didn't look that big to begin with. So simply simply removing alcohol has led to him losing 28 pounds in 90 days. It almost doesn't sound real. Uh, in this conversation, we're going to be talking about how he increased his productivity and um, decreased the time that he needed to increase that productivity. Uh, Ian talks about the clarity that he, that he received in these last 90 days, helping him to move towards semi-retirement. Uh, he talks about how his marriage to his wife changed over the last 90 days and uh, his relationship with his kids, five and six. Uh, and his friends apparently tell him that he's smiling all the time as well. So he's going to tell you a little bit about how he lost the weight what besides um, what little things he did as well um, to lose that weight. But the main thing was just not drinking alcohol. It was just a couple of little things. And how he managed to eat chocolate. He still ate chocolate during the 90 days and still lost all of this weight. It's pretty incredible. Uh, you'll hear us talk a little bit about the Positive Shift Journal. Now, the Positive Shift Journal is a journal that I created with my partner, Juliana, uh, you can check it out at positiveshiftjournal.com. And they, there is a link in the show notes as well. I have my clients inside of the Quit Drinking Program, Project 90, write down what we call the Daily 20, which is 20 things that you're grateful for each and every day. And then I've produced that into a book or a journal, I should say, called Positive Shift Journal. And you'll hear Ian talk about how impactful that was during his 90 days inside of the Project 90 experience. Ian's a very interesting guy. He used to live in my home country of Australia. He used to manage bars and restaurants uh, around alcohol. And you'll hear him talk about how he has tried to reduce or quit alcohol for the past 21 years, I think it is, and how he's managed to finally break the curse, so to speak. And now he's alcohol-free and moving forward with his life, not to mention he's now conversing with his friends and joking about being alcohol-free. Whereas in the beginning, uh, he felt some apprehension about that. A lot of my readers and clients feel that apprehension about what their friends, their lifelong friends are going to say if, they've, if they quit drinking. So uh, Ian will talk a little bit about that. Just a reminder, if you don't get my daily emails and you would like to, you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. There's a link in the show description uh, section as well. And if you would like to be considered for Project 90, if you are ready to quit drinking for at least 90 days with a view to getting long-term power over alcohol, whether that means quitting forever or it means quitting for at least 90 days and then possibly doing some moderation or just drinking on occasion, then you are welcome to have an exploratory conversation with my coaching team. Ian, who you're just about to hear from, was in the same position as you listening to a podcast episode and decided to reach out, have a conversation. He joined us in Project 90, and now he is absolutely flying, loving life, smiling all the time, he says. Uh, if you'd like to do that, then you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule, and you can book a call with one of my coaching team. There's also a link in the show notes. All right, let's get into it. How did Ian lose 28 pounds in 90 days, and how did he increase his productivity by 25% in 33% less time? Let's find out. Here he is, Ian McSweeney. Ian, you didn't really lose 28 pounds, which is two stone in the UK or, or 15 kilograms in Australia and elsewhere in 90 days, did you? I certainly did. I certainly did. And James, I did that without much effort, believe it or not. Now, I did start going to the gym uh, after week three or week four, but I, you know, I'm still eating pizza with the kids and still. Yeah, like when when we got like we all do when we get the sugar cravings after a couple of weeks, like my solution to that was to eat chocolate. So it wasn't it it wasn't through huge means. It's just it fell off me. 
28 pounds is huge, though. I mean, what were you yeah. doing 28 pounds heavier than, than what you are now in the first place? And yeah, like that's that, that's it. I'm 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 not really that um like I'm under 12 stone now, which is about 75 kilos. So I didn't I didn't really have you know I was carrying a little bit of extra weight, but um it, yeah it, it 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 amazed me and it amazes everybody else that sees me as well. You know it's their it's their first comment, particularly if I haven't seen them in a while. What, what do they say? They say Jesus, you're after losing a whole lot of weight. And actually, it's it, it's a great segue uh, because usually, you know, it's how do, how did you do that? And that gives me an opportunity to go on the, uh, to get the hand in first. I can just spit out, I stopped drinking. And then, of course, it's very hard for them to criticize me for not drinking, considering that they've just complimented me in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and what else has that done for your health? Well, my stamina is has just shot up i'd you i'd be fairly tired after a day's work uh whereas now you know i spring home and i'm ready to play with the kids for a couple of hours or do you know whatever whatever do whatever and cycling i do a little bit of cycling um not not anything too too intense but i like cycling sort of uphill uh, and it's that's completely noticeable like when i get up when i get up to the peak whereas i used to be you know out of breath and have to stop and try to drink water and like, get myself back together again before going going down the hill now it's pretty much a case of getting up turning around and bomb back down the hill again feeling good you know it's, it's it's just noticeable from the moment i get up to the moment i go to bed really so just to be clear uh the only real I guess the most significant thing you did in these past 90 days that has created these results is simply stopped drinking alcohol. Is that, is that correct? I mean, it sounds like you've done a little bit more exercise and maybe you've been happier and, but is it, is, is it fundamentally the only thing that you did was stop drinking alcohol and you, sh you shred 28 pounds and have more energy and are playing with your kids and all of these other benefits. Is that it? Pretty much. But the, the only thing that I consciously did was stop drinking on day one. And then everything else just came in behind. Like, let's put it this way. Because I'm not drinking, it means that I'm not having as many curries at midnight. Or, you know, I'm not having, I'm not having fish and chips on the walk home from the pub. Um, but that just happens organically, if you want. Um, like I said, I, I I did go to the gym, but that was just because I felt like going to the gym. It wasn't a big crusade I, I, I was on. The only crusade that I was on was to was to stop drinking. And then everything else just happened as it does. Yeah, that's what that's what always happens, isn't it? Because you, mm -hmm. your only intention was stop drinking alcohol. And what happened was a cascade of healthy habits came into your life. Or the removal of many other bad habits took place. Yep. For, you, you just said it, right? Like that, like because you weren't drinking, you weren't work, walking home from the pub late at night, going in and getting a curry. You weren't ordering fish and chips. So because you were alcohol free, it just removed the temptation of curries and fish and chips. Yeah, absolutely, Ab absolutely. Yeah, all all of those nasties that go with alcohol uh, disappear. And does it, like, most, 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 people, most people who drink are hard workers. Now, that, I'm not necessarily saying uh, that, you know, hard workers in their job or anything, but like drinking is hard work <laughs> because you're putting in a lot of time drinking and then you have to deal with a hangover the next day and hold down a job or hold down a family. Like that, that, that's all difficult. So when you stop drinking, You've got more time on your hands and you're used to always struggling at something. So now you're feeling good. You're not struggling. You have all this time in your hands and you're used to being busy or you're used to doing something. So it's just natural that positive things will come in to replace and, and to fill that time and to close up the hole that's been left behind. Um, after drinking 
Tell me a little bit about your profession. You're a chartered accountant and you're a finance director of a hotel management company. Uh, you're married with two kids. Uh, but tell me a little bit about your profession and what was going on with your profession during your drinking days and what you noticed shifted being alcohol free. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm just going to take you back to to my twenties. Um, when I left college, I was uh, I was a barman um, during college. That sort of paid my paid my way through college, and then I went over to Australia to Sydney uh, for the, the the one year as a lot of us do after college, and ended up uh, managing an, an Irish bar over there for a few years. Then came back to Ireland and just stayed in the bar management, restaurant management hotel management uh, field. So, you know, there, there was always a bit of an exposure to alcohol there. Um, I had an accident where I, I broke my leg and couldn't uh, couldn't sort of pivot and swing around in bars. So I went back and retrained as a chartered accountant. So that was in my 30s. And then got a job in a hotel management company uh, as an accountant. Um, and it, my 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 past helped me out there because I had the sort of operational experience and finance experience. So I sort of climbed climbed the ladder quite well there, and, and got to a situation where I was um, guiding uh, guiding a team of other accountants and uh, out inspecting hotels around the country with um, with the with the other directors of the company. Which you know was 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 fine. I'm blessed that I have some really really good people on my team. Probably a lot stronger technically than than I am uh, in accountancy and reporting and all that type of thing. Um, but the the whole exposure to alcohol and and the you know going to a hotel, inspecting it, meeting the team, staying in the hotel that night that always ended up in the restaurant. And oh, you got to sample this wine and you got to sample that wine and you got to do all that, which was fine. Like I was able to. Um, I was able to drink the wine at night time and maybe have a glass or two. Then when I went back up to the room as well and wake up the next day groggy, um, but still able to do the job. I was able to get through the day without any criticism. And, I, you know, I, I was able to get it done. But since stopping drinking, every hour, every half hour, every minute that I spend in work is just far more productive because I'm just seeing things clearer. Like, Something that I might have sat down and done for three hours, like a proposal or a spreadsheet or an analysis, I now know that I, I can see straight away that there's somebody in the team that can do that in two hours or one hour. So they'll do that and I'll do something, I'll do something else that mightn't be as, you know, you mightn't see the tangible results at the end of it, but it might be more strategic, whether that's you know, out meeting a client or potential clients or developing a relationship here or spotting a bit of talent there. So uh, and apologies if uh, if anybody in my organization hears this, don't misinterpret it when I say that I'm not working as hard, but getting much better results. And then that that goes back to freeing freeing up time to, to doing things that you know I want to do outside of work. When you're producing more in less time, you don't have to feel guilty about spending the extra couple of hours with the family or on the bike or going to the gym or following a recipe, cooking a meal, just doing all those life things uh, that are enjoyable that we should be doing. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Uh, how much more do you feel you are producing in less time? Way, way more, way more. It, is, it's, is, can you like a, can you quantify it at all? Is it like twenty percent more, fifty percent more, double? Is it uh, forty? What's your best educated guess? I I would say in the if if you take the week as the forty hour week, yes, I'm, I'm working a forty hour week and I'm spitting out a lot more. I'm spitting out probably best guess twenty five percent more in the forty hour week than. I would have been producing in a 60 hour week. Got it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So you've increased productivity 25% and you've decreased your hours by 33%. Yeah, pretty much. 
for 60 hours and you've gone to back to 40. Yeah. 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 55, 60 hours back, back to 40 easily. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, great. So, so increased productivity by 25%, reduced your time 33%, let's say roughly. Yeah. Wow. Now, what do you think could be the long-term ramifications or benefits from that? If you now do that consistently over the next 12 <laughs> months, how do we then quantify that? If that keeps going, and, and I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm laughing when, when I'm thinking to myself, but um, I like thinking about the future. And actually, that's another, that's another great benefit. When I'm thinking about the future, it's a lot rosier than when I'm doing it with, uh, with, with a clear head. But technically, I, I could, in my 40s, um, look at a situation where I'm in semi-retirement. And that, that could well happen uh, to, to, to my board directors there uh, approaching 60. And I know five or six years ago, they said that when they hit their 60s, that they'd want to go out on, 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 the, on the golf course. So it could potentially be a situation where the company scales down or, or you know, some, something shifts. But I, I'm comfortable now that with the way I'm working, that I could scale down with it, still be able to provide financially, still be able to maintain a comfortable lifestyle that I have um, by being in semi-retirement, which, which, is, which is absolutely incredible. And even, even, even though that potential probably was there uh, six months ago or, or a year ago, I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen it. I couldn't have realized it. And in fact, the whole thought about having to scale down uh, might have scared me a little bit because um, I couldn't see the wood from, from the trees. But now, so you- that, that, that said, if, if, if that did happen and if it did scale down, that time would be replaced with um, other things. Like I'm, not, I'm quite commercially minded, so uh, I do a little bit of work for Chartered Accountants Ireland and... and um, I uh, might do a bit more of that. Um, I've joined a charity board, so I'd love to get more involved in that. They help uh, they help kids, school kids over in uh, in the third world. So it's just it's just great knowing that there's options, optionality. I, I think it probably sums it up in in one word. So you're pondering semi-retirement by producing 25 percent more and 33 percent less time. I love it. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. That- yeah, yeah, and and you're 28 pounds lighter than when you started with this 90 something yeah. days ago. Yeah, yeah, it almost does. It almost seems unbelievable, doesn't it? It almost seems it, it, like it's an exaggeration. Like we're we're putting mayonnaise on this story. It 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 does. It honestly does. And in such a small period of time, like in in 90 days, the transformation is incredible. <clears throat> and there's proof there that that. There isn't mayonnaise on it. <laughs> I started doing the Marco Polos from day one, and I went back and had a look at myself. Yeah, just uh, to be on, clear, on, just, just for the listener, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Just to be clear sure. for the listener, um, when when Ian is talking about doing a Marco Polo um, in Project Ninety, which is the the experience and program that Ian just completed, we have our clients do little video selfies and share it in this little app that's named Marco Polo, and and that way people can you know, visually see other clients and it creates a great community and people hold one another accountable. So when Ian's referring to recording a Marco Polo, what he's referring to is he recorded a little video selfie on day one or day two and then on day 27 and day 90. Uh, and it seems like he's just about to share with us how he's tracking his progress. So continue, Ian. Just wanted to give that context for our listener who maybe didn't understand what you meant by Marco Polo. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so you can you can scroll you can scroll back. So every every video message is referred to as a polo. So you can scroll back to um, I think you can scroll back indefinitely. But anyway, I, I can go back ninety days and just looking at myself, saying hi, I'm Ian, and I've just joined P90, and I'm looking forward to meeting you all on the calls. I just look like a different person, and it, it's just it's there. And I go, Jesus, that was me. Oh my God, I'm, I'm not I'm not joking. I look at least five years younger, and that's I, I'm, I'm allowed to say that because so many people have said it to me. So I'm not being in any way modest. 
Um, but I do. I, I look five years younger. The, the, my face was bloated, which I didn't actually realize at, at the time. And that's gone. And uh, even even just my, like I was, I was more red in, in the face. You, you could see that, you could just see that my body was sort of struggling a little bit. Um, so it's so it's it, it's complete shift, and the proof is there, you know. Yeah. Just while we're talking about polos, James, that's that's, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but that is such a great tool and such such a resource. Like that's the for me that was the glue that that just held everything together. Um, any any time that any time that I was you know feeling in any way challenged particularly at the start where I needed a bit of support and it was in between calls it's great you just open up the polos and all the all these people that I consider to be my friends now and these are the the other clients on on the program um they're just given their one two three minute little snippet of where they are what they're doing how they're feeling and you know it's not it's not always rosy sometimes it is rosy um, and then, you know, if, if if somebody's having a challenging day, they'll also put it out there and then other people come in and give their support. And uh, you get something from every little polo, whether it's advice from somebody who's a little bit ahead in the program or an opportunity to give advice to somebody who's joined after you. And it just builds up such such a wonderful supportive community. It really, really is a great tool. It really is. Yeah, I've always said that transformations do not happen in isolation. And so that tool that we're just referencing now is a is a is something that I brought into the group about 18 months ago to really foster an engaged community. Because if you're listening to me right now, and maybe you can attest to this, Ian, you try to do something by yourself without accountability, without community, it's very challenging. It's incredibly challenging and the success rate is very, very low. As soon as you add what I call the alcohol freedom formula and the, for, the formula that I've come up with is uh, coaching plus accountability plus community plus fun plus skin in the game, those five pillars together equals transformation. Now, in Ian's case, Transformation is 28 pounds lighter, <laughs> more productivity and less time, heading for semi-retirement when, when he started the process that wasn't even in his thinking. Uh, I'm about to ask you, Ian, about um, family life with your wife and, and, and children since you've been alcohol-free, but that community, those little video selfies, being on group calls, it, it, it's just so powerful. People are always say to me, "Oh, I want to hire you one on one, James. Can you can you coach me one on one how to quit drinking? I don't do groups. I'm I'm scared of being in a crowd, or I don't. You know, I, I'd rather do it one on one. And I charge fifty thousand dollars to do one on one coaching, and I discourage those who are willing to pay me fifty thousand dollars from doing the one on one coaching because, in my personal op opinion and experience, and certainly what neuroscience proves." Group coaching is so much more effective. Being in a community is so much more effective than any one-on-one -on -one mentoring that I could give you. Now, that's not, you know, I probably just cost myself a $50,000 client, Ian. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but maybe you can speak to that, Ian. I mean, how important for you was the community aspect of it uh, compared yeah. to maybe like when you may have tried previously to reduce or quit alcohol? So so important, James. On 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 two counts. Um, like I, I, the first time I realised that I should um, address the amount of alcohol that I was consuming was just before my twenty sixth birthday. So I tried and failed to do it myself for twenty one years. Um, the, the the reason why, and I'm sure you're worth every cent of the fifty thousand dollars, but it would leave a gap because you're not going to be available 24 hours a day. Well, sorry, maybe you are, but you're not going to be interacting with your client 24 hours a day. Whereas when, when there's a community, um, there is 24-hour support. Be it, you know, sending, sending, a text, <clears throat> sending a text to somebody in the community 
jumping on to see what the most recent polos were, referring back to something that somebody said on a previous polo, um, and knowing that you're accountable not just to one person but to a whole community, and you know they're your friends and you're supporting them and they're supporting you. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I would say is that the type of community um, is very important, and it might be possible that the reason why somebody is reluctant to be part of a community and prefer the one-on-one is that they try to do it in a community that wasn't with like-minded people. Uh, and again, that's that's one thing about this program that was such a, a, such a treat to realize was that um, the people in the community were, were very similar to, to me in, in the sense that you know, like we, we we weren't digging ourselves completely out of the gutter and we hadn't found ourselves homeless or, or anything like that. And, you know, we were, we all had jobs and we were all self-sufficient. Um, and un- underneath everything, we all had a positive, we all had, a, we all brought a bit of positivity to the community. So it was a community of like-minded people and we all supported each other. And like that, that's essential. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And the demographic uh, you could relate to, right? You're 47. You're a married father of two. You met other. Um, well, let me just ask you, what was what was the demographics of, of other clients that you engaged with that made it so relatable? Yeah, I think the, the ages range from um, mid-30s. I think one of, one of the guys in his mid-30s right up to... Um, well, we didn't ask everyone their age, but I'm sure late 60s. Um, everybody was a professional, had a career. Most people were family people. There was a, there was a lot of people, um, not necessarily my age, but a lot of people with young kids. And when I say young kids, I mean under the age 10. And very similar to myself, uh, it was quite clear that the fact that they had the young kids was motivating them in this direction. Uh, we want to be there, more available for for our kids. And I think that we all realise that getting up early in the morning to have a tea party is a lot more fulfilling and rewarding than waking up in the morning and trying to deal with a hangover. Yeah. Uh, geographically, well, it was it was amazing. Like, it, be, it could be on a call with six people from uh, east, the east side of America. The west coast of America, the east side of Australia, the west side of Australia, uh, the UK, Canada. Um, if you were on the call, you could be anywhere in the world. <laughs> and it, it was it was great to have like minded people from all over the globe. Like it 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 it, it truly was an international network of like minded people. Tell us a little bit about your home life. Ian, tell us a bit, bit about your wife and about your, your kids and what shifted for you from going alcohol-free at home. Yeah, so we live in, um, we have a townhouse in, in uh, Dublin and I live here with my uh, wife and my two kids. And my mother, um, my father passed away uh, two years ago, so my mother lives with us in, in uh, the basement of the house. Sorry, I'll just clarify that because that drums up images of a dark, damp sort of basement. <laughs> but it's like my, I'm thinking, <laughs> of that, thinking of that terrible scene in uh, the in that Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> bring Bars out the gimp. The bring out the gimp. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry to refer to your mother as a as, as a gimp, but um, yeah. Anyway, you, you you didn't you didn't barricade <laughs> so, her in the basement. You, you, so we, sure we, we, nice, we barricade her in the basement. We turn on the lights for an hour a day. She's good. Uh, no, the, the 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 house is sort of divided in, into two, so that there is a self-contained two-bedroom uh, unit which is on the ground floor of the house. So um, she lives down there. My my brother is a social worker, so um, he he potters around the country, and he could be here three or four days a week as well. Um, he doesn't drink at all. And um, my wife uh, on on if my wife is going out on a binge. That would be two glasses of wine over the entire night. 
Like that's now that's excessive drinking for uh for, for Grace, for my wife. So she's she's not she's not accustomed to um the, the type of drinking that I was doing. And I just to put it into perspective, like it wasn't falling in the door every night, furniture and all that type of thing. But like two bottles of wine, which would be sort of normal to me, was an obscene amount. And Grace just didn't like that. Even even if I was able to handle it, she she just she didn't like the thought of it. And she could probably see how it was affecting me physically and how it was pulling me back and, and slowing me down more so than than I could. So she just didn't like it. Uh, and I know she's she's much happier in the environment now that I'm not doing that. Um, I, I'm a lot happier to interact when my brother comes over now and I hear him downstairs, you know, I'll give him a call and I'll, I'll go down and have a coffee with him. Whereas, I, you know, I'd give him a wide berth if, um, if I had the bottle of wine open because he wasn't drinking and I was. So, you know, I'd just sort of give him a wide berth. So the relationship there is a lot stronger. And as a result, I'm also spending more time with my mother. You know, she's downstairs. So the, the three of us can hang out for an hour or two. And the kids, this and this is really important. And I feel like I dodged a, a bullet here. Um, on a Saturday, I'd, I'd bring out the kids, you know, whether I felt like it or not. I'd take them out. And at lunchtime, we could often go to, you know, the gastro pub up the road and they'd have their chicken wings or their pizza and I'd have a beer, a second beer and, you know, beginning to feel better. And we could stay there for, you know, a few hours. Um, now they enjoyed us. They, 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 they enjoyed being with their dad. Um, I suppose it was just about beginning to, to click with them, particularly the, the six-year-old. That, oh, okay, there's this thing, beer, that my dad likes. There's this thing, wine, that, that my dad likes. And, um, you know, she was beginning to sort of be at the stage going, Daddy, you drink a lot of beer. Why do you like wine so much? So if I hadn't of taken action now to, to put that behind me, it, it would be getting to the stage where the kids would be growing up thinking, ah, this is normal. Ah, okay, this is what grown-ups do. And I'm glad that that's halted now. And I think I think I halted it just in time. Like five and six year olds forget, <laughs> which is great. So yeah, I I, I think I, I think I hit the reset button just in time there. And I far more enjoy bringing the kids up to the park, particularly when the sun is shining, bringing the kids up to the park, getting the lunch al fresco, hopping on a bus then, going out to the seaside giving them an ice cream, telling them not to tell their mum and, you know, coming back then and go to the shops and get something for dinner and cook the dinner and they hang out with me in the kitchen and I'm, I'm enjoying it way more. They're, they're enjoying it. They're, once they're out with their, with their dad, it's, it's, uh, you know, they're enjoying it. We're engaging more, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just much better. Like, like, like I said, I heard one of my kids up this morning and um, about quarter past six, and I went down and uh, I, I can't remember what we were talking about. It was some, oh yeah, it was about whether whether there should be chicken on a pizza or not. You know, and I, I got deep. <laughs> <laughs> deep conversations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was telling her, you know, sometimes sometimes you get pineapple on your pizza. She was looking at me going, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it was all this fascinating stuff. <laughs> You mentioned before we hit record on this as well that people are noticing, or maybe you're noticing that you're smiling a lot more these days. Um, so I always talk about the four pillars, health, wealth, love, and happiness. So we've talked about your health, we've talked about wealth, talked about uh, love with your family, and then just overall happiness. So how has your, your happiness shifted in these 90 days and what's the proof of that? The, happy, the happiness has just shifted. Like when, I'm, when I'm talking to people, um, I'm sort of talking, laughing, smiling. Um, you you can probably see it here, James, on 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 Zoom. Like I'm, you know, I'm I'm not forcing any of these smiles. I'm, I'm just in a much happier disposition. And how how that, I suppose the proof of that is when I'm out with my work colleagues and and I'm having uh, I'm having dinner and they're drinking their wine and they're laughing and they're chatting as you do when you're drinking wine. 
I'm laughing and chatting and smiling and giggling along with them. And I'm not I'm not putting it on. It's it's absolutely natural. And I mentioned before, like I'm I'm a bit of a dreamer, a bit of a future thinker. Um, and when I'm thinking about the future, it's just everything's just rosier. It it's it's brighter. I suppose to sum it up, when when I am thinking about well, the present or, or, or the future, it's not what I have to do. I'm thinking about what I want to do. And that in itself is, is just a very positive shift. Yeah. Positive shift. That reminds me of my um, gratitude journal that I launched, Positive Shift Journal. I should do, just do a little plug here for it because you actually just said the words. <laughs> there you, there you go. And, and that's because I just ordered it. Oh, you did! You did! Yeah, you, bought yeah, one of, yeah. you bought one of my uh, shift positive shift journals. I, yeah, I, the... I ordered two of them. Thank one, you, Ian. One, one for me, one for me, and one for uh, Grace, my wife, to fill out with the kids every day. So hey, might as well start them young. I love it. I love it. Do you want to just tell our listener a little bit about what what that is and uh, what I had you do during Project Ninety in terms of the daily twenty and gratitude and things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. One of the one of the um, guiding practices on P ninety is to start off your day with uh, the top twenty, which is just a list of the twenty things that one is grateful for. And to be honest, they, they were like a, a lot of a lot of times it repeated for me. You know, it could be grateful for the same thing on the second day as the first day, and there's 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 no rules against that. But just getting it down on paper and rereading it kicks off the day on a positive note and the, the more you do that and it happens very quickly James like after after about a week you do actually find that you're walking around during the day spotting things that you're grateful for or remembering things that you're grateful for and saying oh yeah 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 oh yeah I'm gonna yeah I'll remember that I'll put that on the list tomorrow and there's another one on there's it oh yeah, yeah. and as you're as you're spending your day walking around just by default, looking out for things that you're grateful for, you you you, you just feel more grateful. <laughs> uh, you're just happier, and and you see that there is so much out there in life staring you in the face that we take for that we take for granted that we shouldn't take for granted that we should take a step back and go, yeah, well, yeah, that's cool that I have that, or yeah, it's great that I'm feeling that, or or it's great that I did that. Um, so the gratitude twenty journal is a more structured form i guess i haven't i haven't received it yet but from from what i can see it's uh, it's it's a more structured form of keeping a record on that and from the from the uh, promo videos it looks like it's really well laid out and it uh, looks like there's a couple of tips in there for enhancing that benefit that you get from from keeping a list and from keeping a journal like that yeah, but I gotta say, James, ever ever since I ordered it, um, there's there's been there's been great interaction as well from from uh, you guys with little tips and getting nice little emails, um, and a nice little bit of engagement that I that I uh, so and personal engagement, um, from you guys that I wasn't expecting. So that's cool. Yeah, that's really nice. I got I, I really gotta uh, tell the in, so let me start again. I've really got to persuade the listener to believe that this is not an advertorial for anything <laughs> because a lot, know, stuff, yeah. a lot of the stuff we've been talking about here just seems too unbelievable doesn't it but yeah. um yeah yeah there's a i confirm thing. that i'm not receiving a, any gratitudeal for this yeah book. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's a uh, there's a link in the in the show notes uh in the in this episode description there to the positive shift journal if you want to check that out uh and there's also a link there to uh project 90 and if you're not yet on my uh, email list and you would like to be and you'd like to get my words of wisdom, uh, there's also a link there where you can get my alcohol freedom formula guide and they're in the show notes. Uh, any final words, Ian, before before we go? Was there, um, even though, I mean, this has sounded like almost too good to be true, but it is all true. Maybe we should we should balance it out a little bit. And what was challenging or what 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 didn't, work out for you or what it what what is there where is there still work to be done just so this doesn't seem like a one big kind of love fest about uh you know the program and and all of that yeah well there, like there, 
there is there is work to be done. Um, let's put it this way, you know, I I, I, I identified that uh, alcohol was holding me back from my true potential twenty one years ago, and um, hey, I, I I was really great at uh, giving up alcohol. I must have done it probably a hundred times in the in the, in, in the twenty one years. So there's a lot of potential that hasn't been realized. So I, you know, and, and 90 days is only about one and a half percent of 21 years. So you can't expect to get everything back in the 90 days. You can certainly plant the seeds. You see the, the, the green shoots coming up, um, maybe, maybe a little bit more. But uh, the next 90 days, hopefully I'll reclaim some of that, some of the 21 years and the 90 days after that and the 90 days after that. But the ultimate goal is to get back to um, to my true potential. So it's 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 a journey. Uh, the the journey has started off well. Um, now it wasn't all it wasn't all roses and rainbows from day one. Uh, like there 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 was a couple of um, there was a couple of challenges, particularly at at the start. Uh, the first couple of weeks was an emotional roller coaster. And now I mean, like you know. I'm an accountant. I'm not supposed to have emotions, <laughs> but <laughs> Jesus, I can, on week three, I could be starting a conversation in great spirits and five minutes later, just be feeling depressed for no reason. So yeah, that, that had to be dealt with. There, there, there was also challenges like meeting, meeting the friends that, you know, my drinking buddies for decades, uh, meeting them, the first couple of times, you know, wondering, Ugh, am I going to be able to stay out for the night? Do I want to stay out for the whole night? Yeah, so meeting the friends um, for the first time when I wasn't drinking was going to be challenging. And the hotels opened after lockdown, after the pandemic lockdown. Um, there was celebrations all around. So um, that happened pretty much at, you know, at the front end of the 90 days. So there was a little bit of a challenge there. And uh, the sugar cravings as well. Like, Jesus, they were intense, and I tried. I tried to fight them off, but hey, you you, you got to pick your battles. You know, you can't do, you can't do everything all at once. So, um, I threw that to the wind, and I was a lot more relaxed when the drawer was full of chocolate, or when my belly was full of chocolate. <laughs> but look, all, all all of these challenges they they get easier and easier. And if I can throw out a, just a small piece of advice, something that worked for me. Um, along the way is if you plot ahead, if you can see the, 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 the challenges. So if you, if you give up, if you, if, if, if you stop drinking and you know that you're going to be going out with a group of boozy mates and they might be putting you under pressure or giving you a little bit of slagging, plan ahead for it. Identify, right, this is going to be a hurdle. Decide what you're going to say to them. Say it with confidence. And then the next day, when you, when you wake up the next day, you're going to feel great because you're not hung over because you got over that hurdle. But bring it one step for, further. Go out and go for a cup of coffee and have a slice of chocolate cake or go and have a nice lunch for yourself. Reward yourself because it'll make getting over the next hurdle easier. And it, it, it also helps to rewire those neural pathways. So don't be afraid to reward yourself. Ian McSweeney, congratulations. Thank you for sharing your experience with our listeners and uh, onwards and upwards from here. Yes. It was an absolute pleasure, James. And thank you so much for this program. It was great. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I want to load you up with some free stuff. If you look in the show description, there's a link there to get my guide, which is the Alcohol Freedom Formula Guide. And in that guide, I will walk you through the process and system for successfully reducing or quitting alcohol. It's the same system and process that I give to my clients inside of Project 90. And if you would like to get your hands on that guide, you can click the link in the description part of this episode, or you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. Likewise, if you would like to be considered for Project 90 to join our community and get some accountability, some coaching and have fun, achieve some goals over at least 90 days with our help and support, then you're invited to schedule a complimentary coaching call with one of my coaches. You can do that by clicking the link in the show description or going to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash schedule. Now, Project 90 is for over 30s only. And it's really for people who are ready 
to get long-term power over alcohol. You don't have to quit forever, but you will have to quit for at least 90 days with our support. Just a reminder, 95% of my content is free and plastered all over the internet. If you just Google James Swanick and the word alcohol, you'll find that. For those of you who want additional support, if you want coaching, fun, accountability, if you realize that you can't do this on your own or you just plain don't want to, then I invite you to schedule that call and we can talk about if Project 90 is for you. If you would like to take some of my supplements, swanvitality.com is the website. I'll put a link in the show notes as well. I have a liver support product called Loving Liver, which I designed and specially formulated to help remove toxins from your liver after years of alcohol consumption. Again, there's a link in the show description. We've also got a green powder there, which turns into a green juice filled with uh, amazing ingredients to support you and give you energy throughout the day. And there's also a magnesium product, which I take every night to help me prepare for sleep and to sleep through the night. So there's a few options there. Lastly, if this episode or the show in general has helped you or supported you in any way, I would so appreciate it if you would write a review. It really does help the show climb the rankings and expose the show to people who don't yet know about us. So if this show has benefited you in any way and you feel compelled to pay it forward, just writing a short little review, hopefully a nice one, will be so appreciated and I will thank you immensely. Lastly, if you'd like to talk to me about anything at all, feel free to send me an email at james at alcoholfreelifestyle.com. I do read and respond to every email. And you can also follow me on Instagram at at james swanick. Send me a message there. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. Catch you on the next one.